SpaceX just revealed upgraded Raptor 3 engines at Star Factory, and the performance gap with China's copycat attempts is staggering. Chinese company Arcti's Mammoth 1 engine produces only 163 tons of thrust, while SpaceX's Raptor 3 delivers 280 tons using advanced welded joints. That's barely matching SpaceX's original Raptor 1 from years ago. Recent upgrades after SpaceX's May testing incident show sophisticated solutions Chinese manufacturers can't replicate. Let's dive right in. Ta. To understand why Chinese copycats are falling so far behind, we need to examine what happened at SpaceX's McGregor facility in May. That testing incident wasn't an accident. It was a deliberate stress test that revealed exactly what SpaceX needed to fix. During this test, engineers pushed Raptor 3 toward 300 tons of thrust, far beyond normal operating parameters. The engine exploded, but this failure provided crucial data about structural limits in combustion dynamics. SpaceX was specifically testing the methane to oxygen mixture ratio, a process requiring millisecond precision where even tiny errors trigger what Elon Musk calls a hard start. What separates SpaceX from copycat manufacturers is their response to failure. Instead of viewing the explosion as a setback, they analyzed the failure data and implemented three critical upgrades. These improvements reveal sophisticated engineering solutions that Chinese manufacturers cannot replicate simply by copying external appearances. The upgrades visible on Raptor 3SN20 demonstrate why surface-level copying fails to achieve real performance gains. The Gray Collar Innovation The most noticeable addition is a gray protective collar around the Methalox feed line joint. This component serves as a vibration dampening system designed to withstand forces from 280 tons of thrust. The full flow stage combustion cycle generates intense vibrations that can damage joints over multiple firing cycles. Chinese engineers photographing earlier Raptor versions would see this collar but lack the engineering data needed to understand its specifications. They're copying visual elements without comprehending the underlying physics that determines collar thickness, material properties, and mounting configurations. Advanced Turbo Pump Protection SpaceX also added a metal casing around the methane turbo pump assembly. This housing provides multiple functions, debris protection, thermal management, and electromagnetic interference shielding. The casing design requires detailed understanding of heat transfer coefficients, vibration frequency analysis, and electromagnetic field interactions. When you examine Arcti's Mammoth 1 engine, you'll notice the absence of such sophisticated protective systems. They've replicated the basic turbo pump layout, but missed the critical protection mechanisms that ensure operational reliability. The welded joint breakthrough. The most significant upgrade involves replacing bolted flange connections with precision welded joints between the thrust chamber and hot gas manifold. This engineering change delivers multiple performance improvements. Weight reduction of 75 kilograms per engine, elimination of potential leak paths, enhanced gas flow characteristics, superior structural integrity under extreme pressure. This welding process requires joining different metal alloys, copper for the combustion chamber, and Inconel for the manifold. The metallurgical expertise needed for this transition explains why Chinese manufacturers continue using heavier, less reliable bolted connections. Based on these technical differences, the performance gap becomes measurable and significant. Direct comparison of technical specifications shows the actual scope of this technological gap. SpaceX Raptor 3. Performance. Thrust output. 280 tons at sea level. Specific impulse. 350 plus seconds engine weight. 1,525 kilograms. Operating pressure. 350 bar development status extensively tested with multiple iterations. China's Mammoth One claims thrust output 163 tons, claimed specific impulse 326 seconds, engine weight 1,300 kilograms, operating pressure, not disclosed development status, component testing phase. The specific impulse difference proves particularly revealing. Both engines use identical propellants, liquid oxygen and liquid methane, and both claim to employ full-flow stage combustion cycles. 
Yet Mammoth 1 achieves 24 seconds less specific impulse than Raptor 3. This performance deficit indicates fundamental inefficiencies in combustion chamber design, mixture ratio control, and gas dynamics optimization. The Chinese engine is essentially burning the same fuel less efficiently, demonstrating that copying external appearance doesn't transfer internal engineering expertise. Moving beyond raw specifications, the combustion control systems reveal even deeper technological challenges that copying cannot address. The most critical aspect of rocket engine performance cannot be copied from photographs. The control algorithms that manage combustion timing in mixture ratios. Full flow stage combustion requires operating two separate preburners simultaneously. The fuel rich preburner runs primarily on methane with controlled oxygen injection, while the oxygen rich preburner operates with the reverse mixture. Hot gases from both preburners then combine in the main combustion chamber for final burning. This process demands timing precision measured in milliseconds. Early ignition creates pressure oscillations that can destroy engine components. Late ignition results in incomplete combustion, wasting propellant and reducing thrust output. SpaceX has invested years developing the software algorithms that coordinate this complex dance of chemistry and thermodynamics. Chinese manufacturers can study external hardware configurations, but they cannot access the proprietary control software accumulated test data, or failure analysis reports that inform these algorithms. This explains why their engines achieve lower performance despite using similar hardware layouts. The broader implications become evident when examining how this copying approach extends to complete rocket systems. RT's rocket design demonstrates how copying isolated components without understanding integrated systems leads to suboptimal performance. Their Glacier 1 rocket combines elements from multiple SpaceX vehicles. The first stage directly replicates Falcon 9's configuration with four grid fins and retractable landing legs for drone ship recovery. The structure uses stainless steel construction borrowed from Starship's design philosophy. Between stages, they've added a hot staging ring copied from Starship's integrated hot staging system. However, each of these innovations was developed to solve specific problems within SpaceX's overall architecture. Hot staging works on Starship because of carefully calculated thrust-to-weight ratios, structural load distribution, and flight control algorithms. Simply installing a hot staging ring on a different rocket design doesn't automatically provide the same performance benefits. The second stage design appears influenced by multiple rockets, including New Glenn, Vulcan, and Ariane 6 featuring an elongated body and oversized payload fairing. While this configuration may handle large satellites effectively, it represents a compilation of other companies' solutions rather than integrated engineering. This component-level copying approach reveals fundamental limitations in understanding how rocket systems work as unified platforms. The economic implications of this approach become clear when examining projected costs. ArcTE Project's Glacier 1 will launch payloads at $1,400 per kilogram, positioning their rocket as competitive with current Falcon 9, pricing of approximately $4,200 per kilogram in reusable configuration. However, this comparison misses the broader competitive landscape that Starship will create. SpaceX's target for Starship operations is under $10 million per flight, while carrying over 100 tons to orbit. This translates to approximately $100 per kilogram, a cost structure that would make Glacier one economically irrelevant before achieving operational status. The technical limitations we've examined suggest achieving even their claimed costs may prove difficult. Mammoth 1 produces 42% less thrust than Raptor 3, operates with lower efficiency, and requires more complex manufacturing processes due to bolted flange connections. These factors typically increase rather than decrease production costs. Furthermore, the timing of Chinese announcements reveals reactive rather than proactive development strategies, which has important implications for their competitive position. The sequence of announcements reveals how Chinese companies respond to SpaceX achievements rather than leading independent development. August 2024, SpaceX publicly displays three Raptor generations at Star Factory. August 21st, 2024. ArcT announces $1.4 million funding for Mammoth One development, September 2024. 
Chinese media releases specific performance claims for Mammoth One. This reactive pattern indicates Chinese companies are responding to SpaceX's public demonstrations by announcing competing technologies. However, typical rocket engine development requires three to five years from initial design to operational status. Announcing competing technologies within weeks of a competitor's revelation suggests copying existing designs rather than independent innovation. While Chinese efforts focus on replicating past achievements, European companies are demonstrating more sophisticated approaches to rocket engine development. European company Exploration Company recently completed a six-week test campaign for their Typhoon engine, demonstrating genuine engineering capabilities. Their results show systematic problem-solving rather than surface-level replication. Test campaign results. 16 successful hot-fire tests across four different configurations. Progressive burn duration improvements reaching 85 seconds. Resolution of early low-frequency combustion instabilities. Thrust output of 250 tons, competitive with Raptor 2. The European approach follows established engineering methodology, identify problems through testing, develop solutions, validate improvements through additional testing. Their test campaign documented overcoming initial combustion instabilities in achieving stable firing sequences exactly how legitimate rocket development proceeds. This contrasts sharply with Chinese announcements that present performance claims without demonstrating testing results or problem-solving capabilities. European engineers are building understanding through systematic validation, while Chinese companies appear to be making claims based on theoretical calculations. These different approaches to development become even more significant when considering SpaceX's expanding operational capabilities beyond basic launch services. While competitors focus on copying rocket engines, SpaceX continues expanding into orbital infrastructure management. Their recent Dragon cargo mission to the International Space Station achieved multiple operational milestones. Mission accomplishments, 33rd successful cargo delivery under NASA's commercial resupply services contract, 50th total Dragon mission to ISS, including 17 crewed flights, Successful orbital reboost demonstration using Dragon's Draco thrusters. The ISS reboost test carries particular significance for future space operations. NASA selected SpaceX for an $843 million contract to develop the U.S. deorbit vehicle, which will safely deorbit the space station around 2030. This spacecraft will feature 46 Draco thrusters and represents SpaceX's expansion into orbital infrastructure management. Traditional ISS orbital maintenance relied on Russian Progress spacecraft, but geopolitical considerations and Russia's planned ISS withdrawal by 2028 require alternative solutions. SpaceX's demonstrated capability positions them as the primary provider for critical orbital services. Chinese companies remain focused on copying basic rocket technologies while SpaceX develops next-generation space infrastructure capabilities. This technological divergence raises fundamental questions about competitive strategies and innovation approaches. The technological landscape we've examined raises several important questions that will shape the next decade of space exploration. Strategic questions for Chinese space development. How can copying yesterday's technology compete with continuous innovation? When performance gaps become this significant, does replication remain a viable strategy? Can reactive development approaches ever achieve technological leadership? Industry-wide implications. What happens when technological gaps become so large that copied systems become economically irrelevant? Will markets reward systematic engineering over rapid replication? How do customers evaluate reliability when choosing between proven systems and untested copies? Innovation. Philosophy. Does this divergence represent a permanent advantage for organizations that prioritize research and development over replication? Can copying-based strategies adapt when targets continuously evolve? What role does failure analysis play in achieving breakthrough performance? The evidence suggests that SpaceX is not simply winning this competition. They are operating in a fundamentally different technological category than copycat competitors. While others attempt to replicate existing achievements, SpaceX continues advancing toward capabilities that don't yet exist. This is exactly why that Star Factory scene was so significant. SpaceX wasn't just displaying hardware. They were demonstrating an innovation philosophy 
that copying cannot match. What this means is the space race is no longer about building rockets fastest, but innovating continuously while others play catch up. The performance gap of 280 tons versus 163 tons shows companies that create the future versus those that replicate the past. This positions SpaceX to enable Mars missions that copying approaches cannot support. Genuine innovation beats reverse engineering every time, and this is just the beginning. While competitors struggle to match today's Raptor 3, SpaceX is developing Starship Block 3. How do you think this innovation gap will shape space cooperation? Share your thoughts below. If this was valuable, hit like and subscribe to Space Hub for more breakthrough coverage. Ring the bell. The next chapter of human spaceflight is being written by those bold enough to invent what comes next. SpaceX just activated something that has competitors panicking. On September 13th, Pad 2's flame trench system went live, revealing why V3 Starship is breaking physics. We're seeing dual flame buckets, Raptor 3 engines, and mysterious tank configs that dwarf current rockets. The shocking truth. While SpaceX rushes toward December launch, their biggest competitor just got a tiny $1.3 million contract. Blue Origin's New Glenn faces delays. Northrop Grumman canceled missions due to damage. The gap isn't closing, it's exploding. Let's dive right in. What happened on September 13th wasn't just another SpaceX test. It was the moment the space industry realized how far behind they really are. When that controlled stream of water shot upward from Pad 2's flame trench, Engineers worldwide knew they were witnessing something unprecedented. The initial reaction was confusion. The water flow seemed weaker than expected, leading some observers to question whether the system was working properly. But industry insiders quickly understood the truth. This wasn't a bug. It was a feature that revealed SpaceX's revolutionary approach to launch infrastructure. Unlike Pad 1's dramatic steel plate system that creates those spectacular water explosions we've all seen, Pad 2 operates on completely different physics. The dual bucket design doesn't just handle the massive forces generated by Starship's engines. It distributes and redirects them with surgical precision. We're talking about a system